Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today I'm going to answer kind of a question that I see a lot, which is what's the difference between an okay modeler and a great modeler? There are a variety of things that make a difference. Uh, for those of you that work in anything that does modeling, so you could work anywhere from like, I don't know, you could be an economist doing data analytics for economic projections, you could work for a marketing analytics company, you could work for a bank building models, you could work in academia, there's a lot of things. However, as you get going through different experiences, you start realizing that there's a significant difference between those that are great modelers, that can build really stable models that have good performance, and you can have mediocre modelers. Um, but anyways, let's just talk about the differences between the two. So to start off with, good modelers are curious people. Um, mo good modelers don't just run out there and just build models to build models. They also don't just stick to one model. So far too often I see a developer in one area and they say, Dimitri, I work in this area, we use this type of model, so we build this model all day, every day. So that's good, you might be really good at building one model. However, your data might not fit that model structure. And so I think it's very poor practice, even in areas where it's well established that you use one type of model, uh, that you look at alternatives, you explore different approaches, um, with more of artificial intelligence and different types of data exploration, such as like gradient boosting, um, random forest, for example, they're new methods. They're good. They can provide insight. Again, you shouldn't apply these blindly, but looking at new methods makes a model developer better and curiosity of new topics will broaden your horizon and make you a better developer. Um, another issue with curiosity is when you have a problem with data, um, really good developers are curious like why this is happening. They don't just like build a model and say, oh, this doesn't work. And so then they just go to something else. They typically want to look at it and figure out why is it happening? Like, why is there a problem? Why doesn't the data fit? And then they'll move on from there and look at new approaches and learn a lot. So the second one is great modelers understand that we are approximating reality. We are not calculating it. And so I hit this home far too often. Um, I believe this is part of the financial crisis. Uh, I believe this is basically any industry now that's big data and they're getting all excited and like, I don't know, they think they're gonna hit this gold mine and be millionaires. The thing is, is that models that we are using nowadays to model people are just approximating some trend, some reality, and they change over time. And so this isn't like calculating out like gravitational forces. That's an equation. That's an exact number they can calculate. Um, doing models for economics, for finance, for marketing, for social media, for anything like that, we're modeling people and people are not always rational. And so, or they are rational, but you don't understand why they're doing something. And so it is always crucial to understand you are approximating something. You are not actually calculating reality. The third difference between an okay modeler and a great modeler is great modelers eat, sleep, and breathe programming. They understand basic programming practices. They're not out just learning one language, throwing stuff into it, and hoping something comes out at the end of the day. I see this, again, far too often. Um, people with generic degrees, um, especially like the new trendy degrees, they will typically just throw data into a model or a program and then something comes out. And then someone like myself, like in banking, we have to do model validation, which doesn't typically occur in other areas such as marketing analytics, at least not to the extent that we do it. Um, they go through and we have to look at all this code and we have to figure out what's going on. Um, but again, those that are really good at it have good programming practices. Um, it's very organized, it's methodical. They logically place things together. So anyone can come back and look at the model and come up with why they did something and then look for gaps and holes in their theory. It also helps you as a developer when this model comes up for revalidation or maybe the model breaks down in a year in any application, you come back to redevelop it. If you can logically go through what you did a year ago and it makes complete sense, then you did a good job. But again, those that are really good understand programming, they study programming, and they know how to do it well. The fourth thing that makes a great modeler over a mediocre modeler is that they enjoy complexity, but seek simplicity. So far too often, again, do I see people 
that go out there and they have, for example, a financial engineering degree. And so they're gonna go out there and they're gonna make this model as complicated as possible and they're gonna fit it to the nth degree and it's gonna be perfect and it's their baby and everything's writing on this model. And then it goes up and a business person, for example, looks at it, someone who's actually using it and they go, I don't understand what, like, what are all these different variables and what does this mean and why, why are there so many layers and what's going on? And so a great modeler, again, enjoys the complexity, enjoys the learning aspect, but they always seek simplicity. If a model can be built with a simple model and approximate something fairly well, uh, usually it'll outweigh a complex model that has really good fitting, but adds little value on adding a bunch of complexity that is misunderstood. The fifth item that separates great developers or great modelers from mediocre ones is that they're always learning. Um, I think it's odd that I go through and I read a lot of stats. I'm always learning. There's tons and tons and tons of stuff to learn. I have a master's degree and I basically know nothing. Um, I, I will admit that. Those are the PhD. Again, you know almost nothing. There's so much to learn in statistics. There's so much to learn in the field that you're modeling. There's so much to learn in computer programming and mathematics. You can always improve your models by learning modeling even better, learning it even deeper. OLS is definitely the simplest structure I feel that you can understand. However, when you start moving past that, you start going into time series, you start going into uh, artificial intelligent kind of methods and approximation procedures, there's a lot of complexity to it. And really understanding exactly what's going on is crucial. And again, it's this learning aspect when you Go out on your own, you get a book, you learn, or you go online, you Google a topic and you learn. Those developers understand the models inside and out, or at least they understand them far better than those who are just you know, loading up a program going, oh great, yeah, random forest, and then throwing data and something comes out and then presenting the results how great it is, but not really understanding what's in that black box. Um, again, this happens with even basic models. I've seen people throw stuff into logistic regressions. I've seen them throw it into ARIMA models. Arima structure type models. Um, but again, you blindly apply things and you're not learning. Those that are the best modelers are always learning and they're always seeking to know more about what they do for a living. And the sixth and final difference between mediocre developers and great developers is great developers don't blindly test data. So I see this a lot as well. People will say, hey, Dimitri, I have this model. I did you know, X, Y, and Z for my model, and I did these five tests. They all pass, so therefore it's great, right? But they don't understand the data. They don't understand the structure. They don't understand what's behind the model. Um, just because you pass a test does not mean that's the best model. Um, one of the biggest, I guess, things you learn in statistics is that a model can be missing variables, right? And at the end of the day, you don't know what's missing because you can't see the entire universe and you don't see the actual, I guess, function or whatever dri is driving the model in reality because again, we're approximating it. And so that's a great example. Sometimes we're missing variables, but we don't know. And so you can't just blindly test and say, well, Dimitri, it passed you know, the multicollinearity test and it passed this test and the coefficients use OLS and it meets all the assumptions. So therefore it's guaranteed to be the best model out there and we should just use it blindly, right? So those great developers will go through and list out weaknesses of the model. Um, they don't just blindly test. They'll say, hey, I did this with the data. Uh, these are the assumptions we have. These are the assumptions we tested. It passes these. Uh, however, these are the weaknesses and they understand A, what the test is doing. They understand B, the tests aren't guaranteed to get you the best model. And so at the end of the day, great developers don't blindly test or build models. So those are the six things that make a great developer or model builder over a mediocre one. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And as always, until next time. Thanks for watching my video. If you find it helpful, please like, share, and subscribe.